would have explained why it isn't necessarily better. In comparison, our side of house believes that a better world is one that provides a more holistic lifestyle, a multi-dimensional route towards happiness, instead of one single definition of academic success or work success, for example, and more equality between people. Based on this definition, we will show you why our grandparents who lived in a little time where there was no overwhelming social pressure for them to conform to a particular standard, lived a better life than to, uh, people now today. However, before I begin onto my subjects, allow me to go to my two points of contention for the house. Firstly, the opposition, the proposition mentioned that there was more economic freedom today. However, we believe, we the opposition believe that people are unhappy because of this economic freedom, and that the cost of living is increasing also because of that. So therefore, technically, they don't really have freedom. And it is only intended for developed countries. These countries that are developing are not affected at all. No thing. The second point I have is that our proposition that there were no rights. However, we the opposition would summon to contest this subject uh, because it is the same in our grandparents' era as well. And it's not a core issue in this debate. And the same rights are present as well. Now, on to my case of the case. Oh, wait, pardon me. Sorry. I was and our grandparents are better able to appreciate the value of human rights as well. And now on to my case of Sa. No, thank you. And now on my case. Side opposition believes that the Yas state will marry a better world should not be confined to wealth or academics, but which world promotes a more holistic approach to attaining happiness. Why? This is because we believe that in the main aim of life is to attain satisfaction and happiness, that today's debate should be measured in which terms or which world allows for this satisfaction and happiness to be achieved. As the first speaker of the opposition, I would like to touch on two points. First, on the benefit that comes from the lack of established social hierarchies in the past. And second, how a tougher economic time led to unity and determination in adversity. My second speaker, Lionel, will examine history and explore the post of area brought to brought in more equal opportunities and reforms. Now on to my first point, on the lack of established social hierarchies in the past. The thesis of my argument is this. When our grandparents were growing up, the economic and social conditions were such that there was no established social pressure for them to conform to a particular standard, unlike today. This is because our grandparents lived in a time where society was still developing as a result of economic and infrastructure de 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 wars. No matter if it was from Singapore, Europe, or the USA, there was a period where any kind of job was more likely to be deemed respectable, where higher education and an office job were not perceived as the only way to be successful. Consequently, we should that. Consequently, there was no pressure to have to live to certain standards in order to be perceived as useful. This is unlike today. Yes. Oh, uh, right now, right now, the option is going to accentuate because people are national music. And this takes problems in London and Italy. This is unlike today, where although there are cars and technology in lots of universities, people feel miserable because society perceives these cars, gadgets, and degrees as social symbols that people must obtain to be happy and successful. Sir, no, thank you. We think that the lack of social pressures makes it a better world in the past. We cite you an example of the annual happiness index by Forbes, which consistently shows Bhutan as the happiest country in the world. And it also, and I think our grandparents have also lived in the same way. And now onto my second point, where tougher economic time brings unity and determination in its people. The thesis of my argument is this. As our grandparents grew up in an economically more political time, they are better able to appreciate finer things in life because they don't take things for granted. Things like working hard, having a healthy life, and knowing your neighbours. We think that the post-war era encouraged people to help each other in times of need. It also taught people to manage their determination and hard work. This can be directly compared to the youth of today, who are seen as the strawberry generation, and lack the grit and determination to last through adversity. Because we understand how the money in your pocket does not equate to how cool, how happy, and how contented you are as a person, we are proud to oppose this situation. 